Download free design files from ambitious.co.za slash laser art. Just click on the link in the details below and enjoy. So I've downloaded my laser design and now I need to input it into our program and change our settings. So let's quickly look at it. First we've got our border which is for the frame. Um, over here we've got the backing plate for where the photo goes and above that we have our piece of um, MDF that will hold our stand upright that we're going to also cut out. From there we've got our piece of perspex that we are going to cut out and that's going to go in the front of the frame to make sure the picture doesn't fall out. After that we've got our base plate, we're going to take these two here and then we're going to glue them to it so that our stand can just stay put and not fall over. From there we've got a artwork that I've selected myself so that I'll put it around the frame. You have the choice of keeping it there or you can put your own in, any vector that will work. So let's quickly piece this thing together and change the settings where we need to. First I'm going to delete that because we want a slightly angled um, support for the frame and for the base. That is going to be laser cut so we'll leave that as is. The artwork will be engraved so we need to make sure that we change that. I'm going to select it as uh, layer purple. We're going to move it into our frame area uh, in the middle there. That looks good. We need to make sure that we change our purple layer to engrave and not cut. Make sure that you're engraving layers first and you're cutting layers second. So now that we've done that, everything else is exactly where we need it to be. Um, you may need to change the orientation depending on how big your board is, but I'm going to leave it as is. Let's quickly have a look at our power settings. For engrave, I'm going to leave it at 500 speed. I'm going to change this to a deeper level of engraving, so we're going to go 65%, and we can leave everything else as is. For cutting, I'm going to make sure that my speed is 20, and my power, I'm going to leave at 65, because I know that will cut through my 3mm MDF perfectly. So make sure the process is on one, and we'll leave everything else as is. Now that's done, we can move over to our laser machine and get cutting. We're here at the machine and today I'm going to be using a normal 3mm MDF. I'm not going to be using any colored MDF. Um, so I'm going to quickly load this into the machine, get our program ready, download it we need to and start cutting. Right, put my board in and now I need to just adjust my head height. I'm just going to use our ruler method today with our magnet sensor. There you go, the head height is done. Now we need to just go over to our program and save it to our cutter. Now we just need to make sure we select everything on our workspace. We don't want to leave anything out. And we go over there and I'm going to push download. I'm going to delete everything else that I've done previously. And there we go. Now we can move over to our machine and start cutting. I've selected my file, now I can move my head over to where I want to start cutting. And I'm going to move it to the top left hand corner, I just want to make sure that um, I've got enough space for my entire project. I'm going to push test just to see if it's going to fit in. And it literally just fits, so we can now put on extractor and go for it. We've now finished cutting the MDF, I'm going to take it out and we've got to do one more thing which is cutting the perspex. So let's quickly take this out and then loading the perspex and do our head out. 
all you need to do is just highlight this particular block. So I'm going to select it. Once this is selected, you've got to make sure that your selected only is on, otherwise it will cut everything and not just that square that we're looking for. So make sure that's selected and then we can download that file. Alright, I'm happy with my placement. I'm going to put my extractor fan on and push start. Now that that's done, we're going to take this out and the final thing is to assemble it. So let's go do it. Before we assemble this, we first have to varnish or do something to our front layer that's going to be visible. The rest doesn't need it, but today I've chosen to do clear varnish, which I'm going to add a bit of colored dye to it. After we've done that, we can assemble it. So let's start. All right, and now that is complete, and we've now varnished our front piece, which is only the piece that I'm gonna be doing. You can do the rest, but I'm only gonna be doing the front, because that's all you should be able to see from the front of your picture frame. We finished putting the frame together. Uh, now, you can use any picture that you want, but particularly today, I've used this picture. I've gone ahead and printed it, and this is what will be going into my frame. Again, this is for you, you can choose which image you want. Now I'm going to glue my base together so that when I put my back piece on, which will be this over here, it won't fall over and the picture frame should stay upright. Let's quickly do it. Get some wood glue, and you can be generous with the amount that you put on, because wood glue does turn clear, as we know, once you've finished using it. And we're literally gonna take our small piece and we're going to glue it to the end here, make sure it's nice and flush, give it a good push to let that glue spread out. That one's done, now we're going to move over to the bigger piece and make sure that we apply a generous amount of glue. I just want to make sure that everything stays together. You can use a lot less but it's all up to your discretion. Now, here is where it is up to you. Depending on the size of your frame depends on how far back you want this groove to be. Because you gotta remember that this is going to slot in like that to prevent the frame from falling either backwards or forwards. So you just need to see where you would prefer it. And I'm going to do it right at the end, like shown here. You do have room to move it either way. Now that that's done, we're going to pick this up and set it off to the side for it to dry and we're going to move on with the back of the frame. So from there, we're going to flip this over, keeping in mind that you need to remember which way is up and, and down. So here's the top, so we're going to flip this over. Here's our top here. Now we're going to be gluing this piece here and that will enable us to have our back piece to just fit directly underneath that. We've got our piece of perspex that we also cut out earlier. Um, I've left the protection layer on, so I'm just going to peel off the one side, the side that's going to be against our photo. This protection layer is there for a reason. You do need to cut with it on when you're laser cutting perspex. Otherwise, you'll get bounce back on the sides and you'll see little chip marks along your perspex. So, like a tip there, just make sure that you leave your protective layers on. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna make sure I slide in my piece of perspex. It has been cut identical to that space. And we can then see that that's gonna look quite nicely there. Going to take my board, I'm going to make sure that it is bigger than what my hole is. And we're gonna take this, and I've done my picture out of adhesive 
vinyl. You can do yours out of normal vinyl. Uh, is totally up to you. I'm going to, by eye, stick it down in the center of my backing board. I feel like that center is just going to push out any bubbles that I can see and make sure it's stuck down so that when we flip this over we can then put it there and see where we are if it's straight or not. Align it to where we want and drop in our perspex just to make sure that it is nice and lined up. Now remember we have not peeled off our outer layer so that is just a basic example of what it should look like when it's done. So now we're going to quickly glue everything in place so that it's all set and then when we're finished we can then peel off our outer layer when we're done. In order to glue this all in place I'm just going to lift it straight up leave the perspex exactly where it's supposed to so we know that that's the middle and then apply our glue around the edges. Now that that's done we're going to make sure our frame sets down nicely and just double check that it's where we want it to be in the middle and then we're just going to push down generously to make sure that it's stuck in place. Before we go to the back and glue on the rest, I'm going to quickly attach my piece of acrylic and I've chosen to use my clear double sided tape that I'll be putting thin strips around all corners and then just drop this in and it'll be secure. So let's quickly get to that. Now that we put our two-way tape in, we can just put our acrylic and just drop it in. Okay, now that's done. So now we can flip it over and glue on the rest. So this piece we're just going to glue on in the middle. Now that that's done, we just needed to let it dry and it's finished. So the way that this operates is you take your piece and you slot it in there. You take your frame, you lift it up and then you put that piece underneath there. Tilt it at the angle that you want and there it is. Now that everything's done, I just need to peel off the front piece. All right, let's assemble it and have a look at it. And there we go, she stands. All right guys, there's another laser art project that you can do. This one I class as an intermediate design, it's not too difficult. If you really thoroughly enjoyed watching this video, please give us a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you have a comment for us, please give it to us because it means a lot to us. And I'll we'll see you in the next one. At am.co.za, we have always taken pride in our products and customer service. Our Google rating represents our commitment to providing our clients with the best support possible. We have officially achieved a rating of 4.9 stars and an astounding 699 reviews for our Jet Park branch in Johannesburg at the end of 2020. Plobosili Kumalo, a level 6 local guide who has 64 reviews all over the country says, the tech support team is on point. I had an issue with my machine. I called them and they said I must bring it in. The person who helped me checked everything and made sure everything was 100%. Kind staff members helped me load my machine in and out of my car. This was just one of the many appreciative reviews we have received. These tags mean a lot to us. Thank you so much for your support. Let's move our attention to our branch in Montague Gardens of Cape Town, where we have achieved a rating of 4.8 stars and an amazing 299 reviews.
Level 7 reviewer Dash Somalu, who has 119 reviews on Google, says, Great company, great products, and very well-priced items. The training we received from Messias Chunga was top-notch. He was very knowledgeable and knows his stuff. Another satisfied customer amongst many. We would like to thank you, our loyal customers. Thank you, South Africa. AM.co.za. Achievement matters.